For USCFootball.com, I'm Jack Smith alongside Shotgun Spratling for instant analysis from USC's Week 0 win over San Jose State. Final score 56-28, to so the Trojans do not cover, but it's still an emphatic win over a Spartan squad that came in here and the earliest opener for USC since 1996. Shotgun, what were your overall takeaways from this game? Uh, first, number one is special. Number two, I don't have a voice, so uh, I've been trying to, I'm battling through here. Unlike the Trojans, they didn't really have to battle today. Um, they pulled away, especially after the Zachariah Branch kickoff return. He was fantastic, but we saw a ton of players participate. This was basically a glorified scrimmage for USC. They got an opportunity to see, they got tape on so many guys to now go and try to clean stuff up. So don't make the overarching, oh my God, the defense is so terrible again. It's one game. It's, you know, a bunch of guys. They're mixing and matching a ton. If they would have stuck with starters the entire time, you see a different, completely different game. Now, are there things to clean up? Yes. Um, but it, USC took care of business, especially in the second half. Disappointed um, was the word that Caleb Williams used to describe coming off the field. Um, and he said, you know, he's got to do more from the leadership aspect of it. And same thing, Lincoln Riley is a little bit disappointed, especially in the way they ended the first half. So they got things to clean up there. So a, a lot of stuff to teach off of for this game but when you win by 28 points and you know the, the spread was 31 so you're a field goal away from covering the spread I, I think you look at it you chalk it up as it was a great first game to get so many guys get their feet wet and so many guys that are new transfers to see how they play with this guy and that play, guy plays with the next guy all those type things that you can't fully simulate um, in practice when you're facing the same team over and over, you're facing the same scheme over and over. You know, what adjustments can you make? And I thought the, the coaching staff did a great job making adjustments the second half. The offense kind of got rolling in the second half after seeing what San Jose State could do. And, and you know, took, took advantage in the second half. And, you know, with Zachariah Branch making a lot of plays, it, uh, it, it made for a fun second half for the USC fans. Outside of the 78-minute review for an onside kick um, but you know it, it was fun to see all the USC players get involved so many different receivers getting a, a touch uh, a lot of guys getting their first career either snaps or carry or catch or tackle all those type things from you know the star recruits that they had to your walk-ons you know Matt Colombo who's been in the program for four years I believe now has never gotten on the field because he's been injured gets out there on special teams and also gets a carry so things like that really cool to see as well so USC took care of business, got the win. Now, go clean stuff up. Can you grow from this game? And that's what Lincoln Riley said. I think that was his biggest takeaway is, hey, we won. We're a little disappointed that we, we didn't you know, do some things a little bit better, but it's a climb. And he was asked about the defense, of course, and he said about the defense, hey, it's a climb, but we know the ceiling is much higher than it was last year. So now, can you improve from this week to next week and start making the, that climb, start taking those steps up the mountain hill? Well, USC had three quarterbacks play, three running backs in the first drive alone to go along with, I think, they got basically every scholarship wide receiver on the field for the first drive. I mean, you had Quentin Joyner getting a carry on the first drive. I don't know if anyone had that on their bingo card. Justin Dieter said he thought they had maybe 9, 10, 11 offensive linemen come into the game in general, but... Of all the young guys, of all the new guys to come in, all the newcomers, there was no one better than Zachariah Branch. 232 all-purpose yards for the top freshman receiver in the country. What were some of your biggest takeaways from Zachariah's debut? I mean, he's electric. I feel like we've been trying, Chris and I especially, have been trying to tell people that he's special. Um, I tweeted that early when he had a catch, and then a couple plays later, you know, he, he takes it to the house, making former USC safety Chase Williams, turns him around on a cut. It's just the explosiveness. And you saw that on the kickoff return. And he slow played it, slow played it, and then the burst is just, it's its different. Um, and a lot of players t talk about that. And But the most interesting thing to me about him uh, was what we heard from his teammates in the postgame presser is, you know, everyone knew he could be electric. And, you know, you see players come in, the Adoree Jacksons, the guys that are the future pros, you know, that are the five-star guys, the top ten players in the country. And you know they're going to be good. And when they make plays, it's not unanticipated. But it's fun to see for the teammates. But it was really interesting to hear them talk about, yeah, he's good, but like he's going to go play video games after this because he's not going to realize. Jamil Muhammad said he's not going to realize what he just did. He's like, I do. I understand. Like that's special. Um, but he's just gonna, he's so happy go lucky. And everyone that we talked to talked about his positive energy and how he brings energy. Even Justin Dieter said, hey, you know, if it's a slog of a day at practice or the 5 a.m. workouts, Zachariah Branch is like, Diddy, what's up, man? And like, he's just constant energy all the time. So you saw that energy in uh, play form out there, you know, as far as 
there's his talent and stuff, but also, you know, the, the talent is unreal, but what he brings to the sideline, just, you know, hyping guys up and keeping everybody energetic, it's, it's, it's pretty fun to watch. It's pretty special. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can't remember exactly what Caleb Williams said off the top of my head. I tweeted it out, but he was basically like, you're amazing, boy. You're amazing uh, when he came off the sideline. So if you have the Heisman Trophy winner, the guy that just was the best player in college football, tell you that, that shows you a little bit about the talent level that Zachariah Branch has. Well, I mean, he's used to doing this in high school games. He hasn't had a, a game in college yet where he hasn't gone for 250-ish all-purpose yards. So I don't think it seems like too big of a deal for him. He's like, well, I was just doing this in high school, so I guess I could do it in college too. One thing that you mentioned is, you know, the defense has some things to work on. I thought, you know, viewing it from the press box, they look like a defense that is far more talented. I think they look more physically talented, whether it's just the bodies or some of the newcomers that are in. It looks like a more talented defense. Of course, there were still some miscue miscues really at the end of the first half specifically and some tackling early on, but I feel like it looks like a defense that can mold into something great, which I'm not sure we could say at any point last year. Yeah, and I think when you saw certain combinations, especially a linebacker, when you see Eric Gentry come in, it just seemed like everything changed. Um, and that's the difference between, you know, a, a third-year guy, a veteran, a guy that's just so unique to what he can do on the defense versus a true freshman in Tacky Curtis. And we expect a lot of uh, big things for Tacky Curtis in the future, but I think that's kind of the difference when you see him out there. Um, so, like, when he was on the field, it just seemed different. Um, so if he was out there the whole time and there was a little bit of a scare on an extra point, I think it was, um, he's grabbing at his left ankle and you're like, oh, no, this could be bad, especially with after you, what you've seen in the first half when he's on the field, how it changes things. Um, but he was smiling as he was going off the field at halftime. So you, you felt a little bit of a sigh of relief if you're a USC fan there. But, yeah, you know, when you see certain combinations, how they worked well, I mentioned uh, when the depth chart came out, I was like, you know, I expected Keon Bars and Barry Alexander to play side by side, and I think that's going to be, you know, one of their best, the most dynamic uh, interior defensive line pairing. And those were the guys that were starters. So the depth chart didn't mean as much as some people may wanted to make it. It was great, great fodder. Thanks, thanks guys for being so concerned about it. Um, but you know, it was we saw those different combinations and how who worked well with anybody. But you saw. Anthony Lucas coming off the edge. He, it felt like he got held a lot. Uh, and there weren't many holding calls, um, but I felt like you could see the burst from him. Jamil Muhammad, you could see how he can bend around a corner, the big hit he had on Chevin uh, Cordero on, in the back. So you saw the bits and pieces, the glimpses of what they can become. Now they got to clean the stuff up. And, you know, Mason Cobb and Jamil Muhammad both talked after the game about you know, clearing up their rush lane, you know, cleaning up uh, their rush lanes, not getting out of their rush lanes, those type things, keeping containment on the quarterback. And because Jim L. Muhammad felt like, you know, you try to run on us, you know, with a running back, like, you know, good luck, kind of. Um, he's confident in the, their rush defense, but the scrambling, that adds a different element. So they've got to clean up those type things. And I thought it was interesting, Lincoln Riley said, yeah, you know, we knew how talented he was. We tried to spy him and do some different things. And he said, sometimes the spy got kind of caught up in traffic and, you know, that allowed him to get outside. And sometimes he just outran the spy. So, you know, that's realizing, okay, maybe you got to put a wide receiver back there during practice and stuff to work on your angles a little bit better. I thought San Jose State did a really good job of, of its angles as far as pass rush when Caleb Williams got outside the pocket to keep him from getting, you know, instead of chasing his hip and him running away from you, to be able to keep him in the pocket a little bit more, to not let him get it loose as much. Um, but you still saw the magic from Caleb Williams. Four touchdown passes, 278 yards, and you're like, Oh yeah, yeah, he did. He did do really well. It's like, oh yeah, he's the Heisman winner. He, he just, it's just ho hum to him the way he does it. And when he makes a mistake, it turns into a 76-yard touchdown. He fumbles a snap and you know pressure in his face and chucks it downfield. And Taj Washington is wide open. So um, you know, there's a lot to still clean up, especially on the defensive side. But yes, I completely agree with you. You could see that there is more talent there, and we saw that it's deep. And you saw a guy like Elijah Hughes, a freshman. You know, didn't know how much he would play. Thought he might be in the rotation a little bit, but when he got in there, he was making plays. So this is a three-star, you know, uh, defense alignment from across the country. And you go, okay, why are you bringing that guy in when you look at just the, you know, the the stats and the rankings and stuff? But it shows you the coaching staff's uh, ability to identify talent. So I think they have a lot more talent on the defensive side th this year, and I think we'll see them continue to grow week over week as the as the season progresses.
Yeah, I think it's interesting. You mentioned the offensive line as well and the defense. Two places where they were changing people around a lot. And I think at the defense, they kind of found the guys they wanted to put in at the end of the game. But the, the big talking point for Lincoln Riley, Caleb Williams, basically the entire team is be consistent. And I asked Justin Dietrich, you know, how hard is it to be consistent when you're consistently changing guys? And, I, you know, I, I think he didn't want to, you know, say it's difficult because, you know, the team does it in practice. But it does have to be pretty hard to be a consistent team when you're trying to get as many guys into the game as possible, when there really isn't an offensive line combination that they use for more than a drive or two. And, and I think that you're right, calling it a glorified scrimmage that USC, it was an audition basically for some of these guys. And, you know, they do allow 28 points, but they also score 56. They don't cover, they only win by 28. But in an audition point where you're playing a game or a team that went to a bowl last year has aspirations to go to a bowl again this year, I, I think it, it comes away as a pretty positive performance. And you see the talent on the field as, as the, the biggest key. Yeah, and for the offensive line in particular, that is the one area where I feel like that in the secondary, like you need to know exactly what the other person is doing because you have to be a cohesive unit. Like you can get away with it a little bit more at other positions of not being exactly in sync. But offensive line, it's the post-snap stuff of, okay, a guy is supposed to be coming this way. You know, we read it right, but he didn't. He decided to go a different way. You know, he's blitzing on a different thing or maybe someone on the defensive side is making a mistake. How do you pick that up? You know, and when you have last year's defensive line outside of Bobby Haskins, you know, you had guys that have been here five years together, um, then, you know, you kind of feel, you can sense what that guy's going to do. Is he going to pick him up by his movements? You can tell, is he going to get him? Do I need to get him? Those type of things. And I think that's the work in progress. And especially at the guard position, Lincoln Riley said, it's going to be a, a, con, uh, a continued competition. Uh, it was very interesting. You know, listed on the depth chart, it was Jarrett Kingston as a starter and Emmanuel Pregnant as the top name listed as an or with Alain Noah, the 17-year-old Alain Noah. Repeat that, 17 years old. The kid, you know, moves well. He's a mauler. Uh, he's going to be really good going forward. But Alain Noah gets the start, and also Gino Quinones gets the start at right guard. So I thought that was pretty interesting to see those guys in there. And then we also saw, you know, we saw a rotation there basically every other drive early in the game, and then they kind of shifted around a little bit. And then at right tackle, it was Michael Tarquin for two drives, Mason Murphy for one, um, and you know then they kind of went from there. So you're getting those guys, those opportunities, um, but eventually you got to solidify it. And you hope that by getting them the opportunities now and against Nevada that you're going to have experience now. So if Alainoa is not the starter going forward, hey, at least he's got some playing time. If someone does get injured, he's the guy you may want to put in. So those type of things I think are great. So you take a little bit of the hiccups that come in a season opener when you're trying out a bunch of guys and you're auditioning. I think that's a great way to put it. Um, and you take those hiccups and you build from it and you, you take them because it can matter so much more if you're in the meat of your schedule and you lose somebody important on the offensive line like they did last year with Andrew Voorhees going down um, right in the, at the at the tail end of the season and you saw how big of a difference it was. So you know to get a, get those guys reps now is really important. And they were able to get some the second string guys and third string guys in there as well. Maybe not as much as Lincoln Riley would have liked. You know, if they get the onside kick review to go their way or whatever, uh, maybe they get a couple more reps and stuff like that. But overall, they won by 28 points. They put up 56, they put a 50 burger on the scoreboard. Um, the offense flowed. It wasn't a consistent flow, but when it got going, it was pretty, you know, it, it showed how electric it can be. And especially when you put the ball in one's hands, um, you know, there's a reason why he wears number one. Uh, Lane Kiffin famously took away the number one from a wide receiver, Devon Flournoy, because he wasn't, he said, you have to be special to wear number one. Well, the guy they got now is special. So uh, it was fun watching him get his first opportunity. Like he said, he, he probably doesn't even realize that he's not supposed to be, you know, having 230-something yards all perfect. He's like, why would I not? This is what I do all the time uh, because he is that type of player. So you, you saw Kayla Williams ho-hum, four touchdowns, almost 300 yards, special number one, and you saw so many different receivers get their opportunity. So now the real interesting part for me is what do you take away from the coaching staff? Like who impressed from the receiver room, the offensive line? What are we going to see next week? And that's the fun part of this season, I think, is going to be because there is going to be that growth and because there's, there's new faces and they're trying guys out is, all right, is it more of the same next week? Is it a little bit of audition, but now we're starting to get kind of fine-tune it and stuff like that to get ready for Pac-12 play? Um, you know, all those type things are going to be fun to see next week. So don't fret. Don't panic. It's okay. It's only one game. 
and you won by 28 points. It's one game you, you won by 28 points. Yes, a lot of stuff to clean up, but calm down. It's the season opener. It's a week zero game. It's earlier than everybody else. Now you get to go watch the tape and get ready for your next opponent. Uh, I think fans might freak out that the team allowed 28 points, but they did your right. Score 56, and Lincoln Riley said it. The, the two main goals were obviously go 1-0 this week and get as many guys in as possible. They played basically all their scholarship players, at least on offense. Defense rotated a little bit less down the end of the game, and they still won by 28. Like I, I think that the, the, the Trojans, at least in the locker room, are pretty happy about the way that the game went. With the way that the season ended last year, you know, I, I don't fully blame fans if they're upset that the team allowed 28 points to San Jose State, but San Jose State, as Lincoln Riley mentioned, a really good team. He, he kind of poked at us saying, you know, why didn't you guys ask more about San Jose State this week? They've got a sixth-year quarterback. You know, they had one of the better defenses in the FBS last year, and I think he was trying to show you. They had a lot of respect for San Jose State, but they still knew they could go out there and they could win by a comfortable margin, getting as many guys on the field as possible, and that's what they went out there and did. Do you have any more takeaways from this game as USC was able to win it by 28? No, it was great to see all those players get their opportunity, a lot of guys getting their first chance to get out there and their collegiate debuts, even some walk-ons getting their collegiate debuts, um, some players that have been banged up, Zion Branch, you know, getting out there on some kickoffs and different things like that. So that was really fun to see. I mean, like, we'll see who grows from this, who, gets their, who got their opportunity and made the most of it, and who didn't shine is not going to get any extra opportunities so we'll see who can go forward and, and you know make the most of uh the opportunities they got and who can continue to grow from it because i think that's what you're going to see as the season goes on there's so much talented youth that as the season goes on even though you may be a starter you're going to be fending somebody off because those guys that are young are going to get better and better and better as the season progresses as well so it's going to be the constant competition and starting to get back to that feeling of where every day of practice is a true competition no one should feel like they're safe in their spot except for caleb williams and the Trojans definitely feel like they set the tone for what they expect to be a pretty good season. A 56-28 to win over San Jose State here in the Coliseum. They'll be back next week for Nevada after starting the season earlier than anyone else. Uh, Shotgun, thank you so much for doing instant analysis. For Shotgun, Smiling, I'm Jack Smith. Tune in to uscfootball.com for more.